Mm. All right, y'all. So, uh, <clears throat> hmm. I've lost a little sleep since I've been home about a man accusing me of disrespecting his wife, as he said. Charlemagne in the background said, what did he say? I was wondering too, what did I say? So of course, you know, the beautiful thing about the iMessage, uh, the iCloud, uh, it gives you an opportunity to recall text messages and I don't see nothing in the text messages directly into Envy or directly into his wife where I disrespected him or her. First of all, I think of all things that hurt me, anybody who knows me knows that I know and been around some of the most beautiful people, you know, girlfriends, baby mamas, wives. I, it's not even in my character <laughs> to disrespect any man, specifically his wife. And yes, they can milk, not they, because I, I don't even know that, that his wife actually feels this way. But it's it's okay to milk the psych meds. Oh, you said a bunch of shit that you, you reckless. You know what? I'm still on my apology tour. Y'all seeing everything I spoke about it in the, in the interview. But I literally just had to pull up some receipts. And I had to go and look at my phone and say, when is the last time we were actually communicating and does anything about our communication feels like feel like I actually disrespected his wife or him? Because whether I was on psych meds or not, that's you're not describing me. You're not describing me as a man. That was the most hurtful thing ever. Charlemagne said, Well, what did he say? Wanna box you in the mouth. He he ha ha. So listen. I'm not going to show y'all what we were texting about. I just want to show you the death. That says DJ Envy wife, DJ Envy, mission. Right? That's when I was on a mission to help in any way I could to step in and help his marriage. And then, if you look here, that says August 23rd, 2022. This is a text chain with me, Envy, and his wife. Not... 2017, 2018, where I supposedly disrespected his wife and I was blocked. I got receipts. If your wife blocked me, if you blocked me, how are we communicating about anything? August 23rd, 2022. Now, let's go a little further. Here is some communication directly with your first lady. Okay. The last thing we were texting about was we were actually trying to figure out, because I told y'all I've been very uncomfortable about talking about what God used me to do and blah, blah, blah. Like I did it as from my heart, I didn't know him. I don't have a history. He ain't my brother. We ain't family. We ain't childhood homies. So it was such a random assignment, and I ended up doing it. But for him to go on the airwaves and say, I wanted to box you in the mouth because you disrespected my wife. My wife blocked you. I blocked you. And I just unblocked you a month ago. That's a fucking lie, bro. That is a lie. Look at this, man. Me and your wife were communicating August 11th, 2022. August 11th, 2012. Look, I said something that was seven hours and three, eight, she said without fail. Like, I got receipts. I'm sending, I'm sending images of my new Rolls Royce to your wife. Like, I know y'all always got nice cars and this and that. Like. If she blocked me, if I actually disrespected her, as you allege, and you felt the way, how are we communicating August 22nd, 2023? 
It's bullshit, bro. Like that's that's like look look what your wife just texted back and said absolutely beautiful talking about me purchasing an island in Turks and Caicos. That was August 23rd, 2023. Come on, man. And the last time that all three of us was on the text chain, we were actually going back and forth trying to figure out when can we finally do an IG live with all three of us finally talking about what God put on my heart to do on behalf of the marriage. So I'm going to ask you, sir, since all of this is played out for the public, did I disrespect your wife? Or did I not? Because why would your wife be communicating and responding with me with all the good energy that it's always been, and why would you be communicating with me and your wife on a text chain? And why am I texting you directly and you're responding? There is no problem. There is no disrespect. Just be a man and say, when you went through the same shit that I was going through, I just needed an out. I needed to just, like, yo, I, I'm not fucking with none of that. Just say it. And then here's the last thing that nobody knows. When I had my psych med meltdown, it was around 2017 because I woke up to the news September 11th. And probably like a month later is when this goofy ass psychiatrist gave me the psych med saying it's going to help you to calm down and stabilize your mood and it fucked me up. The psych med episode had already came and went. Me and my ex were still together over a year, year and a half after. The whole thing went down. Me, you, and your wife have been on calls. We've been texting. We've been communicating. And we've been good. So for you to say, I stopped fucking with you because you disrespected my wife. And my wife blocked you and I blocked you. And we just wasn't fucking with you. And every time you, you came to Atlanta and you texted me like, yo, pull up to the crib. You know why I was inviting you to the crib? I was inviting you to the crib because you were in town DJing. I wasn't inviting you to the crib to hash out no issues about me disrespecting your wife because I never disrespected your wife. You never said I disrespected her. She never said. It's a lie. Just be a man and be honest and say you went above and beyond for me out of the goodness of your heart. And I didn't have it in me, nor did she, to step up and help you when you was in the middle of a crisis. Y'all could have flew to Atlanta. Your first lady could have pulled my ex-wife to the side and had five, six lunches and dinners and did whatever she had to do to try and get her to stay committed to the marriage. You could have pulled me to the side and had conversations with me. You could have did anything. And even if you had attempted to help, she would have still made her decision and say, no, I'm out. I praise God every day that something that God put on my heart to say to you and your wife actually helped y'all in any way I could. But let's not be out here lying and creating characteristics in a man that ain't there, bro. I'm gonna box you in the mouth. Over some shit. First of all, hee <laughs> hee ha ha, nigga. For real. But second of all, you lying on me, bro. You just making shit up. I got receipts. August 23rd. Text messages. I'm not going to show y'all what we texting about. Text messages. Text. Responses. Text. Where is the person? This is his wife. This is first lady. Where is the person? She's giving me Rashawn's new cell phone number. August the 10th, 2022. The psych med and the supposed disrespect happened in 2017. So what I want us to do is I want us to be adults and I want us to leave the conversation alone and I want you to go ahead and keep wrestling with what you're wrestling with, which is that brother went out of his way and he was there for me 
And I've been laughing at him on my show. I've been talking shit. I've been throwing shots. I've been looking at the rumor report. We've been dunking it a day in it. Read my captions and all my shit. And you've been just take every time a guest come on your show, you say, hey, man, what's up with Tyrese? I'll be like, damn, Envy, why you trying to bait niggas into talking shit about me? You did it to Ludacris. You did it to Tank. You be bringing my name up when people come on the show. And I'm like, what would my bro? That's why I came into the show feeling the way. Why I'm on my Instagram? I'm going to tell you why I'm on my Instagram. Because everything about what you said was on a public platform. And I'm addressing this shit publicly. To let the world know. Your girl, your baby mama, your wife. Not envies, but anybody. You can leave me in a private room and you can secretly record the conversation. I will never disrespect another man's wife. I will never disrespect another man's woman. As a matter of fact, when women break up with dudes and they're going through what they're going through, if I actually know the nigga and this Ex-wife or ex-girlfriend is all of a sudden available. I won't even fuck with that. That ain't who I am as a man. There's too many women out here to be out here messing with somebody. If you know somebody that they used to like, come on, man. That's you, that. That's integrity that you learn in the hood. nigga. Real hood niggas know you can get your whole motherfucking head caved in for real for fucking with another nigga's wife. <laughs> we don't play those games. Too many, too many niggas have been laid out in the hood for crossing that line. You don't do that. August 2022. To text messages directly into your wife's phone. Text chains between me. You just blocked me a, a, a month ago. That's a lie. I disrespected you and your wife. Your wife blocked me. That's a lie. That's a lie. And I deserve an apology. The way you came at my wife, I should box you in a... How did I come at your wife, bro? Just say, I never gave a fuck about helping you when you was fucked up the way you went above and beyond to help me. Own it, nigga. Own it. When you had your meltdown and your problems and you was on the brink of your, look, a year and a half after the Psych Med episode, that's when Samantha divorced me. There was no Psych Meds in sight and me, you, and your wife were all still very much so in touch on calls, communication, text chains. I ain't got to lie and make shit up, nigga. I got receipts, bruh. You're wrestling with what you decided to not do when my world was crashing down because you know I went above and beyond to do something for you that I didn't have to do. So let's not justify it. Let's not start grabbing shit out the sky to make yourself feel good about you hitting the parachute button on me when shit hit the fan for me. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Paint your picture. Say what you say. Talk about what you talk about. Our last exchange was about us finally going on Instagram to talk about the book that y'all put me in, which I'm honored and grateful that y'all decided to tell the story. I didn't want you to. Y'all decided to do interviews and tell everybody what God used me to do to step in and help in any way I could. And you have decided to not be there for me. And you feel bad about it. You feel like shit about not helping me in any way. Yes, you do. And if you want to know why I invited you to my crib when you was in Atlanta, because I actually know you. And we, <laughs> me, you and your wife, have all still been on calls, communicating and still cool. So that fuck shit you talking about, disrespecting my wife and where, where? 
How? When? What? And if I really did, you would have blocked me in 2017 and never unblocked me ever until it was addressed. So you decided to wait until we was on your radio show to talk about some shit that never happened. Love Transaction, my new song, is available on all streaming platforms. Please go and support their book. It's on Amazon, it's available. I Don't Think You Ever Loved Me, featuring Lenny Kravitz and Leandria Johnson, it's available. Clearly, Envy is not going to play my music on his show. But I got receipts, bro. And to describe me and put that type of energy on me, you couldn't be more wrong. You couldn't even be more wrong about some shit that I would do when I was, I know I was out of my mind. But I'm almost sure I didn't even disrespect you or your wife when I was out of my mind. Because if I did, why have we still been in touch on text chains and individually? Y'all have a blessed day. Somebody just wrote, why didn't I say this during the interview? Well, I didn't say this during the interview because I was not about to pull out my fucking phone and pull up text messages and look at the dates and the energy or the dates and the times that we have been communicating right there in the middle of an interview. But I've been, that's, this has been fucking with me that this man would put this type of energy on me. So I had to come home, calm down and pull out my receipts. And I got them. And the same text message to my phone is in their phone. What I'm going to say is simple. Don't respond, Envy. Don't say nothing. Don't jump out there. Just leave it alone, bro. You got way other, bigger things that you fighting through right now. You don't want this smoke. I promise you don't want this smoke. Because I got receipts. And I'm not making nothing up. Just say, when you had an opportunity to step in and help me, when I was depressed and sad and confused and about to lose my wife and my family, you didn't do anything and you didn't help and you didn't feel the need to help. Y'all could have flew in town. Y'all could have called us. Y'all could have did anything. You just didn't do it. That's it. That's the bottom line. And a whole lot of people didn't help either that I've been there for as well. And I got to just go to God on this, man. And I got to just let it go. And I'm only on this IG live because you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't put, no, I would, I would never, ever disrespect and cross the line, flirt with, sh those shots, <laughs> I don't play those games, my nigga, at all. And if I actually disrespected your wife, why are we still texting with text chains between me, you and her? Why have I been texting you direct? Why have I been texting her direct? Because it's all good. So I thought until you dropped the bombshell on the breakfast club. Charlemagne said, damn, nigga, what did he say? What did he do? I'm asking the same question. Obviously, it was nothing. Because if it was, where are the receipts? Envy, I forgive you. First lady, I forgive you. And if I actually said anything, whether I was on psych meds or not, that was actually disrespectful. I don't remember what I said. I don't remember what I said. I don't remember what I did. Allegedly. If I did say something, if I did disrespect you, Envy, or your wife in any capacity, I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. Do I believe? Do I believe I disrespected y'all?
I don't believe it for one second. Because if I was actually blocked, why have we been texting this whole time? You didn't unblock me a month ago. You just wanted to go viral. <laughs> My nigga, stay blessed. Click the link in my Instagram bio. Love Transaction is my new single that just got released. I Don't Think You Ever Loved Me is my song that just got released about the divorce and everything that I've been dealing with. And I would love for y'all to hear it. Envy's not going to support Love Transaction. It's fine. For everybody else... Over 50 radio stations that's already playing my song, and we haven't even officially went to radio. For everybody in radio that's already been supporting my song and my single, and we haven't even officially went to radio, I just want to say thank you. That means the world to me. I never thought I would ever sing these songs or release songs with this type of context. And, 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 and lyrics, but it's out there. So let's take all this energy and let's get back into our positivity. Usa vibes, energy. But the only way I can rest at night is if I clear my name. And y'all can have whatever opinions y'all want, but I'm not finna go to sleep at night and have a man to attack my character. And if I actually did what you said I did, why have we all still been in touch? That's all. Have a great day, boys and girls. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. We got the Breakfast Club interview. Gonna be on in the morning. Rumor has it that shit got so heated, the energy was so all over the place, got so loud, and so much animosity, they may not air the full interview. Although I think that'll be fucked up if they did that. Because I'm a man first. There's nobody get that can't address anything with me that they thinking and feeling and festering. And there's nothing I shouldn't be able to address with my shit. It's been a long time in the making. I love these two brothers. But it's been some shots been taken at me. And we unpack it all in the morning on the breakfast club. Mm -hmm. Whatever city, state, and country you live in, make sure y'all tune in. The breakfast club, Charlemagne the God, DJ Envy, and my girl Jess. Yeah, I ain't gonna say it, but this might be up there with one of the most legendary interviews ever done, because we just went at each other. Shit just went crazy, and it happened fast. I think security had to come upstairs from the lobby. My security guard was outside the door. Security came up. Because somebody said that there was a complaint about the yelling and the noise. Make sure y'all tune in to the Breakfast Club. Big boy shit. Big boy conversations. I don't talk about you. I talk to you. 
honored that y'all had me on. Wake up in the morning for the Breakfast Club, iHeartRadio, syndicated. Yeah. Get ready. I'm waiting on this shit to kick in so I can go to sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm going to be on Good Morning America in the morning. If I can wake up, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I don't think you ever loved me, Lenny Kravitz, Love Transaction. Have y'all heard the song yet? It's streaming on all the platforms worldwide. Just want to tell y'all, man, I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Y'all have so many other people y'all could be following, watching, and paying attention to, supporting, agreeing, disagreeing, whatever the case may be. I just love y'all for loving me, man. Just want to say thank y'all. Tune in and watch The Breakfast Club tomorrow. It's some shit like you ain't never seen before. <laughs>